Hello again, everyone. Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the novelist drydocs.com. And I uh, got a bit of uh, a project I'm going to share with you. And these skills uh, that I want to try and pass along uh, pertain specifically to troubleshooting uh, a problematic water tight cylinder. So this cylinder was actually sent back to me by a customer. It's a couple of functions, he says, uh, are not working. The ballast system, he says, is not working and the throttle is not working. So um, we're going to take a look at it step by step of the troubleshooting process that I use to figure out what's wrong and rectify the issue. Here we are, and hopefully this will help uh, alleviate this concern in the future. So when you say something is not working, is it not powering up at all? Is it trying to work, but the actual linkages are not working? What are the indicator lights? What's the state of charge? Give me some background so I can help you figure out what's going on. All right. Um, yeah, Bob's hint number one, don't just say it's broke. It's not working, I wanna send it back. You need to be able to fix these things. You made the investment, it's time to own up to it. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look at the specific uh, issue that we are working through right now. So this is a, uh, a three inch watertight cylinder uh, used in an ARC model type seven. Um, immediately uh, off the bat, I can tell you this was not packaged properly. There was some force applied to the end uh, it broke free the mounting bracket for the uh, servos here. Now I've got to rectify that. And uh, on the other end, uh, these output shafts here were uh, bent as well. So that's got to be fixed. So step number one, fix what's broken so that I can go on to troubleshooting why the original problem is a problem. So I'm going to... Uh, do some bolting and gluing and get these servos mounted back together and uh, then we'll take a look at the two issues that I mentioned before. All right, so, uh, repairs have been carried out. I've got my servos uh, mounted back in there nice and secure. Uh, hopefully those won't be going anywhere anytime soon. So um, we need to diagnose uh, some issues. So got my radio here. Turn the radio on and uh, didn't send the battery, so I'm just going to plug in this extra battery that I had. All right. I heard doo doo doo, uh, but not the remainder of the power up sound for the speed controllers. But they've got uh, their lights both on, so um, it means they're getting power, uh, they're just not uh, apparently getting signal. Um, BLM indicates, I don't know if you can see that in there, um, full charge on the battery, which is always a good thing. Um, so let's see, let's uh, test out some of the functions here. We've got forward servo is not working, all right. Rudder is working. The pitch controller is working. Pitch controller override is working. Throttle is not working. Ballast. So the ballast servo is moving, but the linkage is not. So that's telling me there's probably a, uh, an, an actual physical break in there somewhere. So we can take a look at that. So. Um, it looks like three issues. We've got our forward servos uh, for bow plane and uh, torpedo. Oh, no, the torpedo launch servo is working. So um, it is a matter of tracing through and uh, going through these issues one at a time. So let's start with the um, with the uh, speed controllers. We're going to eliminate the receiver as being a potential issue. So I'm going to disconnect the uh, 
throttle lead. I'm going to plug that into my servo tester. There we go. Um, and these little units uh, are available like on Amazon. They're like eight bucks. And you just give them five volt power and you can plug a servo directly into it uh, and uh, test it. So one of these motors is working and the other one is not. So we'll go through one at a time, check all of the wiring, make sure that's good, and then we'll revisit. All right, as it turned out, the uh, issue with the ballast tank was uh, very easy. I just needed to uh, adjust the uh, little control rod that was in there, push it out about a sixteenth of an inch. So uh, what that actually looked like, there's a control rod that goes all the way through to the ballast servo there. And uh, it was just uh, this way, just like a sixteenth of an inch. So it, it slipped off of the horn on the inside, so I just moved it. And, uh, and now everything is, uh, is working perfectly. So everything is, is good in that regard. So we can move on to uh, diagnosing the issue with the forward ballast servo, which I'm hoping is going to be the easier uh, of the remaining two issues. All right, mystery uh, of the forward servo has been solved. Uh, this is the old servo, this is the new servo. You can see I've got my servo tester uh, here. And, uh, oh, it's not plugged in, hold on. So again, servo tester is really nice because you don't need to mess around with the um, uh, radio. So, working perfectly now, uh, mystery of the non-functional servo. I don't know if you can see this, if I can get it to focus. Aha! You see the condensation uh, in, the, in the top there? It, uh, <laughs> there's water in that servo. Dead, garbage. So, um, this cylinder got flooded. That's why we're having issues, and I think that's what's going on uh, in the back here. Um, one of these electronic speed controllers uh, is working. The other one is not working. And uh, if I try and focus on there, do you see that corrosion right here? I'd be willing to bet uh, this cylinder got flooded. And um, yeah, now the uh, speed controllers don't work. And I'm worried about the receiver because I don't know that it was putting signal out and if that's the case it's going to be a much larger issue so let's replace some uh, speed controllers and see what we can make happen all right so part of the evaluation process was to determine what component uh, in the back here was messed up and I mentioned I was worried about the receiver so what I did uh, unplugged both of the speed controllers and plugged in a brand new servo to the channel that was giving us uh, grief and fortunately um, it works so the receiver is putting out signal to the servo the servo uh, moves in time to the inputs from the transmitter so I've eliminated uh, the receiver as being potential issue that leaves um, both electronic speed controllers as being the problem. And as I showed you earlier, there's a lot of corrosion on there. Um, I'm going to pop them off and uh, I'm going to see if I can scrub the connections with some um, alcohol and uh, clean up any potential short circuits that are occurring in there. They are getting power, the LED lights come on, but um, the signal is not getting through with one and the other one is not receiving um, anything at all. So um, let's give that a shot. And Eureka! Uh, everything is functional. You can see I got uh, lights on the uh, speed controllers. We're going to run through all the functions here. We got our forward dive planes, we've got uh, rudder, and then on the other side we've got our throttles. And uh, let's see here, what else we got hanging around here? We got our uh, override for our rear planes. And ballast, ballast is uh, right here. I'll do it like this. 
So, um, everything is functional. And the uh, issue, primary issue, is that uh, we had a flooded cylinder. Um, killed both electronic speed controllers, killed both forward servos. Um, the issue with the ballast was um, just a, needed to be adjusted. So, that's all figured out. Now I just gotta put everything back together again. Well, there you go. That's a little bit of insight into how I go about diagnosing issues with a, uh, a watertight cylinder. Uh, when you're trying to figure out what's going on, um, you need to understand that uh, your cylinder is not a cylinder. It's composed of a whole bunch of subsystems that you can isolate from each other and diagnose individually. And that's what you need to do. Isolate that entire uh, subsystem, be it your motor, your drive system, be it your ballot system, uh, you know, rudder servo, whatever that may be, uh, and you want to move through that component list until you get through the whole thing, move on to the next subject to, uh, to troubleshoot. So um, this bad boy is all done, tested, uh, fully functional and ready to go back to its owner. Um, it took me about three hours uh, all in to diagnose, uh, troubleshoot, and repair. So, uh, and that, of course, was because there were multiple things uh, gone wrong with it, but uh, typically you'll find it's one niggly thing, uh, you'll get it figured out and uh, get your boat back in the water. So, hopefully this helped. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Drydocks. Thanks for joining me, everyone.